Hey everyone, welcome. We are. I think it's uh, the 10th of Shevet. Of Shvat. Shvat. Uh, an old print, 292. But new you print. know, and you have the new print. Huh? 300 in the new print. 300 in the print. Uh, we're going to do a little chaim in memory of your grandmother? Uh, you know. No, master of ceremonies. Come on, you brought the cookies. You got you to distribute the lachaim. So while I'm giving a little background, you know it's going to give out the lachaims. All right. So we, we started a concept saying that Hashem created with speech, right? It, it was saying that it's very, um, the speech is very insignificant. Um, and, and, uh, and we said, but speech is not, our speech and Hashem's speech is not the same because our speech is separate from us. But Hashem's speech, it, there is nothing separate from Him. Everything exists, in, everything exists in, inside of Him. That's where we, um, that's where we, uh, that's what we said. Ah, so we asked the question, if it's not speech, how come, how come it's called speech? So it said, because... Because Hashem, it, it just, the Torah is giving us an example for us to understand expression. Speech is really expression. We, we're focusing on the fact that speech is separation. Really, speech is expression. Ah, now you're going to come up with the question. But how do you get, how do you get from God to us? How do you get from God to us? Meaning, God, and God is God. There's godliness. And godliness is so, is so great. Yeah, thank you very much. Apparently, Michael J. is not here. Wait, 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 this guy. <laughs> so, my, my, so Michael J. would fill up a seven-ounce cup. This guy hardly fills up. L'chaim, l'chaim. Come, come. We have more for you, right? L'chaim. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. See, yeah, the neshama of, of your grandmother, she have an aliyah. L'chaim. Grand or great-grand? Great-grandmother. Great so imagine, imagine, imagine how great the neshama is. is. Imagine. We're, we're sitting there learning in 2024. She passed away in 1994. Right, and we're sitting here, 2024, learning in her memory. Look at this. Just, by the way, that keeps the Jewish people so alive. The fact that we're sitting here, learning in her memory. Mm -hmm. It says her, she's alive. What am I talking about? We're learning in her memory. She's alive. It's it's uh, a big suudaim uh, shemaim, no? Yeah. When I was born, there's a story, a little story. When I was yeah, born, yeah. she told my mom and my father. She told them. Uh, no matter if he's an engineer or a pilot or whatever he is. She didn't mention Instagram, huh? No. No, all right. <laughs> um, just make sure he's big in the Torah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I mean, and, and, you, and you're well on your way. Um, so, 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 the, so the, what Alter was answering here called him double question. So first he answered one question is, how do you get from God to this to us? So he said it contracts it so much, it's limited so much, until it presents, <clears throat> it, present, it, it could be even something anti-godliness. But then we, ask, then we get kind of to the, this, this idea. Why would God allow anti-godliness to, to exist? Anti-godliness in the, in the Tanya is called Sitra Akhra, the other side, or Klippa, you know, it, um, or the covering. I mean, if I write a book, I want everyone to know, I wrote the book. You should know, by the way, there was a time period in Jewish history where people wrote books and didn't write, put their name on the book. We, there are certain books we have today. We have no idea who wrote them. We have a, I, we think, we, maybe. We, we don't know for sure. You ever heard of the book called the Sefer HaChinuch? Mm -hmm. We don't know who wrote it. There are certain books we have no. Also, the first book of, uh, of one of the books of Jewish history, we don't know who wrote it. Yeah. So, so, but you mean, but most times, I mean, we, what do you, forget about not giving, forget about I don't get the credit. Imagine I write a book and then you, you go rip it off and you say it's yours. I say, One thing, guy, you don't give me the credit, fine. But if you go rip it off, hello, I'm standing right here. Why would God allow Clipper, the, the shell covering godliness, or even to deny God's existence to, to exist? Right? So we said, oh, because it has to be free choice. Fine. We understand that they exist. But then we have another problem. How do they exist? How do they exist? I mean, we know AIDS is a disease. It's an autoimmune disease. What's happening? The body is fighting against itself. It's unhealthy, right? Why would God allow anti -god Why would he give life to anti-godliness? That doesn't make any sense. You're giving life to something that fights you? Almost like a terrorist. Right, yeah, right. So the, they, right, Israel, Israel the monsters because not giving the terrorists free water, food, internet, right? I mean... They're, they're the uh, only problem is, you know, the only problem is to everyone else it makes sense. We're, look, we're going around looking and saying, are you hearing what I'm hearing? Right. So the question is, how do they exist? That, why they exist, we understand. There has to be free choice. But how do they exist? 
so that so so we started to say it's because so the Abishta does it only to, for us to have free choice in order for us to have free um, reward and punishment. Reward and punishment can only ha happen with free choice, right? You know, like like that like that famous uh, uh, guy with congressional testimony. This guy, I think he was <coughs> Schultz. I think it was Schultz, the owner of Starbucks. And the, and the lady says, Charles Schultz. Yeah. From Canarsie. Canarsie, right. And he says, you, the lady says, you know, you're a billionaire. It's not fair. The guy says, you know, I, I, I earned this. You know, it's not okay. It didn't just happen on its why own. Why didn't I earn that? <laughs> uh -huh. why, did I, why didn't I earn that? Because you know of a coffee shop, right? <laughs> if you want to you start at a coffee shop. But I'm, I might be a harder worker than him. Well, that's, what, that's where Mazel comes in, right? That's the Indian Hashem's yeah. bracha. No, he, he actually came from modest means. He yeah, yeah. Modest. What does that mean? Very so did I. Yeah. So Why am I not a billionaire? Yeah, didn't open the first coffee. Listen, if everybody, if everybody was a billionaire, then billionaires wouldn't be worth anything, right? <laughs> anyway, so, so, so we're saying... All right, or after, after. Anyway, so we said, the Abisha does it, so to speak, because he has to, quote, unquote. We, we, I put it on quote, because the Abisha doesn't have to do anything. But because he chose to give us free choice. So he does it because he has to. Meaning, when someone does something, um, he gives something that he doesn't want to, he'll throw it, like, turn his face and, so to speak, throw it over his shoulder. Like, I do it cause, not because I want to, because I have to. So the Abisha doesn't want, Hashem doesn't want the forces of evil and impurity to exist. But, but because he wants us to have free choice, so he could have created the world with no free choice. Angels live in that. In that, uh, angels have a purpose, by the way. Just because you don't have free choice doesn't mean you, you don't have purpose. Animals don't have free choice. Trees don't have free choice, but they have purpose. Angels don't have free choice, but they have purpose. He could have created the world that he didn't give us free choice. I mean, it would be a very, very colorless world, just like angels are colorless. But he, he decided he wants to give us free choice, right? And that means he has to allow evil to exist. So he, so to speak, he threw it over. He, um, he threw it over his shoulder. So that's where that. And the author is explaining now. That's where the term pnimi and chitzoni. Pnimi means inward or face, and chitzoni means outward or back. So when I, when I'm interested in you, internal and external. Yeah, but here, here I didn't use those words on, on, purpose, on purpose because it doesn't really apply. The English doesn't apply okay. to the, our conversation. When I'm interested in you and I want to talk to you, I, I turn towards you. When I'm not interested in, in you, I turn away from you. I can still hear you, but I, but I, don't, I don't want to hear what you have to say, right? So when I, I, well, what does the Shem want? What's his, in, what's his face? Meaning, what's he interested in? He's interested in a good world where the people are following his commandments. And that should be the forces of, 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 of good. Now, imagine there was only forces of good. There would be no freedom of choice. So Hashem, so to speak, Gives it, all right, fine, I'll allow you to exist. But not because your existence is important. It only serves, what we're talking about in the last class. That the, the, their existence only serves another purpose. Let, let's get inside. Here we go, 292, by the 10th of shot. Here we go. If you guys have any questions, you feel free to uh, task. The, 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 the goal today is to finish chapter 22. Vehine, Ratzin Elyon, Hashem's supernal will. Whenever it says Hashem's will, it always says supernal will. What does he really want? His countenance. What is, what is his inner aspect? What does he really want? That is the reason of the, uh, 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 he gives life to the whole world, right? So for example, he gave the, 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 the um, example of uh, why does a person go to work? Because he's interested in work? No. The work is, you can, what, what you really want to do is you, you got to live. You, gotta, you need a house. You need food. Now, no, since money doesn't grow on trees, and, and, and well, at least not, at least not uh, in, in South Florida. And because no one's giving, there is no such thing as a free lunch. Well, it, 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 well some people get free lunch. But usually, for most people, right? All right. So, so what do you got to do? So you got to get up. You got to go. You got to get up and you got to go to work. But you can become anything you want. You can become a doctor, an engineer. There is no one way to earn a living, right? Sometimes a person could lose his job and think, oh my God, I'll never, I'm, I'm lost. And then he finds another opportunity. So that means the, the, the job is not really, what you do is not really important. It's that you do. So your goal is to provide for you and your family. The job is the means. 
So what does the Abishter want? So, so, it's meaning, so your inner will is to provide for your family. Your outer will is how you go about it, right? It's interchangeable, the, the outer will, right? So, so, um, so, so the inner will, that is what Hashem, that's the, the, the life for the world. And that inner will, that, we gave the example, if you remember last, last week, of making a meal. When you make a meal, there's automatically going to be garbage, right? So the food is what is your inner will. The garbage is the outer will. What is outer will? Mean, meaning you know it's going to happen. Unless you're that German and right, everything, everything is exact. There's going to be garbage. So, what, so the, the leftover, so to speak, or you know, we said well, who eats the garbage, the rats and the cockroaches and all that, that's the, that's the other side. So your so your inner will doesn't think about the rats and the cockroaches, and even the hinder part, even even the Hashem's okay, I'll do it only because I have to, so to speak, doesn't is not um, invested in them. Alamakif was invested versus versus uh, aloof. What's the difference? Invested means you feel it, you, you can you can touch it, right? Aloof. So, so going back to another uh, another example, the opposite of love is not hate. What's the opposite of love and opposite of hate? Also, what's the opposite of love and hate? <clears throat> really, indifference. Indifference. Meaning, if I hate you, you're I'm invested in you, right? Let's say someone does something wrong to you, and you harbor and you harbor a grudge. They're living in your head rent free. You know, when someone does something wrong to you, you know what the best thing you can do to them? Is not care. Because then you're showing them that you're not even important for me to hate you. I think I told the story once. I, one time I, I, when I was the head counsel in Toronto, I was driving. I don't know if I, I, don't know if I did something wrong. Or, I, I don't, I, it's not like I had a, you know, a, 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 a Jews Israel with bumper stick on the car. I, don't, I must have done something. Guy pulled up. Like the time you drove here in, uh, during uh, school time, right? You yeah, didn't know that you did something. Wrong. No, though, though that then I was sure I did it right. <laughs> that was even worse. I thought I was throttling the speed limit. Oh, I got a ticket. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right, out, right, right outside your development. I, I didn't realize it was a school zone. I was going thirty miles an hour. Cop gave me a ticket. Yeah, right outside his house. Right next by Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so, so the yeah, guy pulls up. So the guy pulled up outside, yeah. uh, outside a, uh, outside a red light. By, 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 by red light, and he's giving me the middle finger and he's screaming at me, and I didn't know for a second. Why are you angry at me? So you know what I did? I started waving and smiling at him. And it, the light turned green, and I went, and he zoomed, and by the next red light, he was all red in the face, and the more he gave me middle fingers and screaming at me, ah, the more I smiled and waved. And it just, it was eating him <laughs> that, that I wasn't reciprocating his obnoxious behavior. Till today, I have no idea, right? So, so, the, uh, so the opposite, so, so, meaning, Invested means you care, even if it's hate. So the, it's Hashem's uh, energy into the sitrach into the other side is not invested, because then they would be conscious of of the uh, of the godliness, right? Of, of the, they couldn't deny godliness that much because God's invested. So the energy that God's in, is giving them, He remains aloof, so they're not even they're not even aware. El makav alav alam ma'ila it encompasses from above lakachi makam mitzvah atuma. Therefore, therefore. If, if you think that there's a law, if a person dies, he's impure. Why? What's the connection? If he dies, he's impure. Why? Why do we connote evil, death, impurity? If you think about it, because what's, what's death? Death soul. is lack of life. Soul leaves the body. Yeah. That's, so soul is life, right? Lack of life. What's, what's God? God's life. God's pure. So it's everything anti God. That's why evil, death, impurity is death is is impure. Hashem Yisrael, God watches. For a minute measure of light and life, she she yinekes and mekabeles that it derives and absorbs the seicha mimchinas echarayim the gedusha shelamayla. So 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 to this backward backdoor way of of getting life, it's there. Who bechinas golus mamash beseicha? It's in a state of exile. What's exile mean? Exile means you're in a place, but you can't, you can't express yourself. It, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a terrible state to be. It, when we get into the, into chapter 30s, 
Al Rebbe is going to talk about what, what we could use for motivation sometimes when we feel very blah, we're not in the mood of doing a mitzvah. Al Rebbe goes to different chapters of what we can do. One of the things is you have mercy on your godly soul. It's stuck in this horrible environment. Throw it a bone, right? You know, it's, you know the body is doing all these terrible things. You know, have some mercy on, your, on yourself, on, on your own nisham. So do you imagine? This godly, soul, this godly um, um, spark, remember, keep in mind, everything needs a godly spark to exist. You can't exist without a godly spark. Otherwise, you don't exist, right? Mm -hmm. So how come you, it, it, it's, 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 it doesn't feel it, it's in a state of exile to, to such an extent that it, deni that, that it denies it. Beside Golos HaShchino, this is the exile of the within the Klippas. Lechein, and therefore, and therefore, we find that, call, that the, the term is used for the klippa, it's called b'shem alakim acherim. It's called other god. Now, acherim, don't translate as acherim, as other. As acherim means from the, back, from the back part of God. And that is shahi avoid azar mamish. This, is, this constitutes idolatry. Remember, this whole started with a conversation that every positive mitzvah is included in anoichi Hashem lekecha, the first commandment, I am God. And every negative commandment that you should, those shall not do is included in the, you shall not have any idols. And the question we were asking is how, how does that? I understand idolatry, but how does but how does a small mitzvah or a small aver? How does that go against the belief in one God and, and, and having idols? So it's because God's everywhere. And God gives life to everything, even to the even to the light, even to the things that deny godliness. So to so when you when a person doesn't aver, God forbid. What's he doing? He's adding to energy that denies, that, that, that denies God's absolute um, authority. What, what's Avedah Zara? What's, idol what's idolatry, by the way? I know we think Uga Chaka, Uga Chaka, dancing around you know, fire and all that. But what, what, what's idolatry? Idolatry is, you, you're attributing of? Hashem. Okay, and attributing divine power to something else. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, atheism is a form of idolatry also. Because you think you're God. You think you got it all figured out. Hmm. Even though really, even, even though the Rebbe says, even though the Rebbe said, atheism is a form of, ag of ego. The ego is equivalent to idolatry. Atheism means it doesn't make sense to me, so it can't be. Is there any, any bigger form of ego than that? Because, because I don't understand it. Okay, there's a bunch of things you don't understand. Even though the Rebbe said there is no such thing, such thing as atheism. No one really believes the world came to be by itself. You can say whatever you want. You can say a boy is a girl and a girl is a boy. But that, I can say the I was watching, you know, I was working on the calendar today. So I'm watching, you know, I'm listening. I was listening to a guy debating one of the guys. So he said, what, what's a woman? A woman is a woman who defines, the woman is a person who defines as a woman. So not, not, that, that, that's not a definition. <laughs> Um, you shouldn't listen to that stuff. <laughs> no, but it, it sometimes it's debate. I'm saying it, it can cause trouble. No, no, no. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> so Avodah Zarah is the kefirosle bechtusay shemalach malchol makarish baruchu. So people think idolatry is to deny that God exists. That's not. That's not. That's not um, necessarily true. Avodah Zarah idolatry is denying the absolute unity of God. Remember, we say Shema Yisrael Hashem Echad. Let me ask you a question. The Christians believe in God, right? How come the Jews gave up their life rather than, than acknowledging Christianity? They also believe in God. Not like the pagans who believed in idols, they believed in God. Why? Because they didn't believe in Hashem Echad, one God. It's not just you believe in God, you have to believe in Hashem Echad. That's why the last thing a person says, Hashem Yisrael, Hashem Lakinu, Hashem Echad. The unity of God is a very is just as important as believing. Yeah, okay, let's read the explanation. The explanation of these two reasons is as follows. Every created being is animated by two types of divine life force. One is internalized, uh, which is sort of being which is to suit the character, the capacity of each individual creature. Meaning the table has its life force, and the rock has its life force, the tree, everything has its custom made. It is this power that determines the character of each being. It becomes one with it and fell by it. In fact, this internal life force constitutes its identity. The second type of life force is encompassing transcendental nature. It has not adapted itself to the, to, to the individual character. It's not clothed within it. Rather, it animates it, um, so to speak, from its own level. The Clippus too are animated by these two uh, divine life force. The latter type, since it does not permeate them, does not conflict with their ego. 
you have God says, never say. Right? I remember one of my favorite stories. So it was like my, my, my friend's father told me the story. He was learning with a guy, and he was learning Talmud. Now, in the Jewish people, there are certain people that are like on a, on a pedestal, untouchable, right? Moses, Rashi, Rambam. I mean, there are certain people up there. The Rabbi Huda Nasi Rabbi. So the guy, uh, Rashi, the commentator on the, on the entire Talmud and the entire Torah, right? He's untouchable. In fact, the name Rashi stands for Rabbi, R Rabbi Shal Yisrael, the Rabbi of the Jewish people. Okay? So the guy was learning. This is a religious guy. So the guy says, you know, Rashi says this, but I say, so my friend's father tells me, he, he's, he's, he's British. I closed the Gemara and I told him, so I am not qualified to learn somebody, with somebody who's on par with Rashi. Basically, schmuck. There is no Rashi says and I say. There's Rashi says and you be quiet. Right? That's, that's the way it works. You don't have an opinion when Rashi has it. Right? So the Klippas, the problem with the Klippa is, as God says, that, that, well, that's what the Yitzhah does talk, by the way. Even in Kalashians, you think, well, you don't, we don't know about the Mitzvah. If you don't know about the Mitzvah, you don't know. But what, what does the Yitzhah do? It's trying to convince you out of doing a Mitzvah you don't know about? Obviously not. What does the Yitzhah even in Kalashian do to you? So God says, but your opinion also matters. That's the equivalent of idolatry, no? Isn't that? The problem, so why do we do it? The problem is, is that when we're doing that very, we don't realize it. That, that's what the Hittahar does. He fools us. It's not objective. Now, I remember talking about this. A rabbi gave a, a great example. You know, the, 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 the people that try to convert Jews to Christianity. Mm -hmm. And he said, I have no problem if you try to convert Jews. But do it honestly. Go to them and say, you know, the Torah, your Bible says this. Our Bible says this. And because of that, you know, our religion is better than your religion. But that's not what they do. They go and say, no, 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 it's all the same thing. And really, you could be the best Jew. You know, they lie to you. The, the, sle the sleazebags. That's what these people are. You know, it, it, and they prey on people that, that, that know. I was actually talking to someone. That people, I was standing next to a, a Jewish person, sitting next to a Catholic person, asking questions. She kept saying, oh, it's all the same. I said, no, it is not. It is not the same. Absolutely not. So what the what the Yitzhar is trying to tell you is there's God and then and then there's you. <clears throat> the Klippa, the third paragraph. The Klippa cannot, however, acknowledge the former internalized type of life force while asserting the same for at the same time the separate from God. That means you can't acknowledge you're connected and at the same time think you're disconnected. It doesn't work, right? Let's say you come into Shul and Yim Kippur and you're inspired, hopefully, <clears throat> and someone comes over to you, hey Ben. You know, let's go watch the game this this, this week this year. Yom Kippur is on Shabbos. Right? I don't know if you guys are into college football. Yeah, right. I, I, I don't know. If I, I once I once had a, a story. No, it's, it's, I know it's a side story, but um, before we, before the nice sukkah you guys are uh, experienced. So we had a smaller sukkah, and it was at my old house. He put down. I put down papers by myself. Oh, oh sorry, it wasn't even before that. It was in my townhouse. I think. And, and uh, the first year we sank into the mud. I said, no, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get uh, pavers. So right, Yom Kippur was on Shabbos. And you guys know the Yom Kippur, I, 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 I exert a lot of energy. So the day after Yom Kippur, um, as they say in Yiddish, it's match. So Home Depot closes on Sunday, six, eight, I can't remember. So I show up to Yom, uh, eight or 8.30, whatever. So I show up to Home Depot an, a half hour before closing. And I say, I want 90 pavers. So there was a guy working in the gardening department, and he says, you know, man, so why you got to do that? Uh -huh. Why you got to show up a half hour before closing and ask for 90 pavers? Well, you didn't just decide to buy 90 pavers. You knew you were going to buy 90 pavers. So why do you do that? I said, so I told him, I said, sir, the truth is, I told him about fasting, and I, and, you know, and I just didn't have energy to, to, you know, to get up. So he says, he says yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about. He says, my friend, I was watching college football with my friend yesterday, and he wouldn't need anything because it was the holy day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I thought, you know, here's a Jew. Regardless, he was still watching the football but, game. But, exactly. but, but he fasted at Yom Kippur. He fasted, he fasted. You know, they mean, the football. But he fasted at Yom Kippur. The meaning, that means the Jewish spark in him was alive. But 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 for him, I'm saying. But but to me, I was very I was very very touched, very touched that the 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 the, 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 the Jewish spark can never be extinguished. To him, it wasn't a contradiction.
because Yom Kippur means I, I don't eat, and no matter what. And I'm sure, but for us, we're sitting in shul, there's no food. You can imagine you're sitting there with his friends, there was a bunch of food and drinks, and, everything, and, and he sat there the entire day and didn't. You know, I mean, it was, it was very, I was very, very moved by it. All right. So, so the clipper can only, the clipper, the Yitzhahara can only come and tell you to do something wrong whenever you feel disconnected. You don't realize you're connected. When you're, when you're connected, you can't, you can't, they come, can't come and tell you and say you're disconnected, right? Right? So the clipper only understands the energy it's getting from God from above, right? So that's why you have your opinion and, and I have my opinion. Let's, uh, let's um, explain it in Alter Rebbe's words. Okay, bottom of 293 in the old print. Where are we in the new print? Since the godly spark, the godly energy, is in a state of exile inside of it, right? It has to exist. But it's in a state of exile, so the forces of impurity, which are sustained by God, don't realize their life force. It's not subservient. To God, what does subservient mean? Subservient means you you acknowledge, meaning that you you realize that your entire existence comes from from uh, from this entity. So when when you're subservient, you do you, you do what you got to do. When 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 you think you're independent, then, then you're obnoxious. But other Rabbi, and and not only is it not subservient, the forces of impurity magbia atzma kneshel soars itself like an eagle. Loimar to say, Aniva Afsiyoid. This is a quote. Um, this is a quote from the book of Yeshayo. And he's saying, I am, I, I, I am, there's nothing beside me. This is, this is uh, from a, uh, which king? Uh, I forgot his name. He said, he said, No, God, what do you mean? This is just me. And, and, and Paro, you said, You early Vani Sassini. says, I said, The river is mine and, I'm, and I made myself. Paro thought he was a god. Really? And he, I think he actually really believed it. It was just an idea. Just at the time, it, it, they all, they it, all it, thought they were in gods. a way it could make sense to mm -hmm. them. Every power, every power. What do you mean? Based on you know, they what? had the voodoo, every they had all these yeah, kind yeah, of things. Yeah. And in their reality, it could it could it make sense. So, so you, so you see though, you see though That's the the today. progression it's from bad to worse. Not. First, first as God says, and I say, then he say, forget you know, there's no God, it's me. God, you know, God doesn't exist. Because you think about it. If there, ha there has to be a first cause. How do you get from one to the other, right? Because it, it first began, you know, Maimonides talks about this. How do we get idolatry? So Maimonides says that in the beginning, the people didn't worship, didn't mean to d deny God's existence. They thought that God put all these celestial beings in the heaven. Obviously, God, they want, they, they want, God wants us, sorry, to give them um, respect. It's kind of God's cabinet, right? It's you know the president and his uh, and his and his and his an entourage. Entourage, entourage, right? Yeah, his henchmen, so to speak, right? That's why you have to be careful. You got to you got to worship the God, Sun God, because you know maybe you might go to God and tell, but then they forgot about the root, and just worship the uh, you know. The, the, there's an experiment that my wife thinks is fake, but it's a great experiment. Where you ever see it, 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 it's a waiting room. And, and there's like six people, or maybe less, whatever, in, in the waiting room. You have said that if I was in here. You're not supposed to be here. Um, I, it, this is a men's class. I can say whatever I want about you. <laughs> Don't watch the other classes, please. Uh, and and I couldn't uh, make challah yesterday. Exactly. <laughs> they they got my back. Why well, you like challah? Yeah. Make she wanted to make. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to anyway, so there's five people in the waiting room. Also. Yeah, there's five people in the waiting room, yeah. like, and they're in on it. And there's one new person comes in, and all of a sudden a beep goes, eh, and everyone stands up. And the person who walks in is like, okay. And she stands up, and it happens again, and they all stand up. And then they come in for the doctor's office, and they're slowly calling in, like the people that were in on the joke, and every and on, the, on, the, on, the, on the experiment. And then they're introducing new people. And, slow, and slowly, the only people that are left are new people. and but. Because they saw that person getting up, they just they just get up, and the whole idea was experiment. The people just follow, you know, whatever it is. So, it, it, Maimonides has said that idolatry didn't start off with God with, um, denying God's existence. It started with worshiping other things. They forgot about 
the, the root cause and all that, that, that. That's just what we do. And then, that, and then Abraham comes along and says, dude, you guys are crazy. First of all, you don't have to worship the sun. It has, it has no free will of its own. It does whatever God says. And there's one guy that controls everything. And they said, we're crazy. You're crazy. We've been doing this for a thousand years or more. 1,500 years, we've been doing it this way. You come with this wacko idea. Can you imagine? Yeah, um, you know, it's like, it's like the doctor said, wash hands because, you know, because uh, of germs. They thought he was crazy. Mm -hmm. But he was right. A Abraham, you had to realize how crazy Abraham was. I mean, I'm saying in a very disrespectful way, but I mean, his idea, mm -hmm. it was so rooted in, it was so rooted in, in, uh, in, in society. It's like the self-made man, right? Like Ron said, why isn't Ron, why isn't Ron a billionaire? Because Abraham should decide it. You know, there is no self-made. You do it, you, it happens because Hashem said, right? You, there are plenty of stupid people that are rich, and there are people who put in effort and everything else that are not. It's, it, that's the way it goes. It goes the way the Abraham the the says. But like, for example, the people say, oh, I can't keep kosher, I can't afford it. I can't keep Shabbos, because I got it. It doesn't work that way. That is a form of idolatry. God is in control of everything. If, if, you, if a person really believes that they can't keep kosher because they can't afford it, I mean, most of the times they're, they're fooling themselves. It's just an excuse. But if you're, a person really believes that they can't keep kosher because they can't afford it, what, God takes care of 8 billion people in the world. Your extra piece of chicken is going to break the bank? I mean, what kind of God are you believing in? It's a form of idolatry. You know what I'm saying? So, that, so that's what it is. So, but, but it, it can get to a point where a person says, oh, it, it's all up to me. This is why... Out of all the out of all the bad character traits, the rabbi says Shagasas Aruach that arrogance, Shkula Kavad is equivalent, is equivalent to is equivalent to idolatry. Because arrogance is look at me, 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 me. Um, I know it's it, 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 it's, it makes sense. He because the, the the essence and root of idolatry, who that he thinks of something separate. It, 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 there is not only not only there is only one God is God is the only one there is nothing separate or outside of him so Nifra separate from the holiness of, 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 of the Abishah now interesting by the way al uses the word Makim here Hashem has many names so to speak and one of them is oopa, 9.30 oh, no, I see. actually changed the timer one of them is Makim place why? Because Hashem is, uh, no, we, uh, we don't take up of any of Hashem's place, but Hashem is in, all, is in every place. That's one, that's one of the, he says, the mock I'm here. Not denying God's existence. If I want to eat this bagel, and it doesn't have an OU on it, what do I tell myself? I'm in my corner. God, you got the whole world. I'm just going to stay in my corner, and I'm going to have my bagel. That's denying God's unity. Which place is void of God? You're gonna run where you know, you know the story of we're gonna read on Yom Kippur of uh, of Jonah. What's the message of that, uh, of that story? Take swimming lessons. Swim <laughs> fast. <laughs> right. So some people say, oh, that you can't run away from God. So but that's not a, that's not the real lesson. The lesson is you always have a chance to turn to turn around. That's the lesson. Well, some people many times I would teach them, oh, you, you can't run away from God. Who thought you could run away from God? Any God you think you can run away, you run away from, don't worship him. That's, that, 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 that's a very infant, infantile God. There's you, a story about a father who asked his kid, where is God or where do you see God? I'll, no, I'll give you one coin if you tell me where, where is God. So the kid tells his father, I'll give you 10 coins if you tell me where God isn't. Exactly. <laughs> very, very good, right? It's, a, it's a very good. Yeah. It is the Gemara, like the Gemara says, what is the what is the Avodah Zarah called? The Kadir Leia and the Kadir Lekai. They call God the, the you know he's the he's the, he's the big boss. I mean, but we're little bosses. We're also we're also important. We're also important. But you see, all the forces of evil, at Parai, and all the things, all they say, look at me, look at look at me, look at the greatest people of all time. Uh, Avram calls himself, I'm nothing, I'm zero, dust and ashes. He calls himself, um, and and Moshe says, we're nothing, we're zero. The greatest people consider themselves zero. Because they, know, because they know the truth. Because they consider themselves the independent being. And in this, they separate themselves from the holiness of a God. Why? 
because because they are not subservient to him. So it, it, it gets to a, a side point very very quickly. What, who was the greatest prophet of all time? Moshe. In, 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 in what way? One of the ways that he was the greatest prophet was that in every other prophet, they, they experienced some kind of physical incapacity when God was speaking to them. They either had to be sleeping or their body was shaking. Or Moshe spoke to God. Con conscious, awake, right? He was standing, not sitting like us. Why? So Kabbalah explains it's because Moshe was totally subservient to God. There was not one part of him that caused friction. No, I, I, I sometimes give the example of the room when they, they, they build space things. You know, things for space has to be totally sealed. There can't be any dust. Phonetically clean. Huh? Phonetically. Right. So, you can't, so God is allergic to any dust. The more subservient you are to God, the more godliness there is. Moshe was absolutely a, a clean pipe conduit. So there was no friction. So in, in, in the, uh, the other extreme is Pari. He says, look at me. I did everything, right? So what, like Moshe came, comes to Pari and says, God said, let the Jewish people go. Pari says, I don't know who God is. That's the, I mean, that, that's an extreme. Okay, in Kedush Rasa, uh, in the last page, because the holiness, the supernal holiness does not rest. God is going to be where you allow him to be. Like the famous story with the Kotzker Rebbe, someone, the someone asked him, he said, where is God? He said, wherever you let him in. That's, uh, so you want a relationship? He's ready. Therefore the Zayar calls him peaks, peaks of separation, because they're haughty as a mountain peak, and they're separated from God. And this is a, a denial of the true unity of God. Because the reality is kula kamikala khashif. The reality is everything is nothing. He is the only entity. And everything that we think is important, or everything we think is, is not. A bottle by MS Lispar. Everything is, is absolutely nullified. The truth, the proof is, if Hashem doesn't want you to be, you won't. That's and it's only it's only his will that that's that's sustaining you and bringing everything you see into existence at every moment. And it's his will, it's only because he wants to, to animate the whole world and to bring them into existence from, um, from, some, from, um, from nothing into something. Meaning, the natural state of everything is nothing. The natural state of everything is nothing. Nothing truly exists. I have to, given the example, right? If I have to keep throwing this up, you know, for it to be in the air. But you say, and you say, and let's say I do it very fast. But there's, there's air pushing it up. Right? Would you say the natural state of it is to float? No. It's just being pushed up. The natural state is to be down. The natural state of everything is nothing, meaning it doesn't actually exist. It's only the Ebishter, Hashem, who's constantly animating the world. He's constantly renewing creation. The problem is we got so used to it that it, we get to the point where we say, oh, God doesn't exist. Or God exists, but I also have an opinion. That's uh, so. Let's let, let's just read this uh, the summary after the three dots. To summarize briefly the points made in this chapter, the, through many tzimtzum and contractions, the divine word brought into being Klippus and Tzarachra perceive themselves to be entities separate from God. For this reason, Hashem's word is described in Torah speech because it, it, it's perceived as separation. It's not actual separation. Um, it says, however, the separation exists only from our perspective. We perceive ourselves as separate, but the separation is not actual. It's only perceived as such. Within, um, with, uh, we're still connected, with, we still exist within him even after we're created. With this, the altar concludes one step of the discussion be begun in chapter 20. Um, there he stated, in order to explain all the commandments of the Torah encapsulated in two first uh, concerning idolatry, I am God, and I don't, don't have an idolatry. This in turn necessitated, necessitated an in-depth discussion of the meaning of the unity of God and what idolatry is. Now, as thus far explained, that Shem's unity means that he is the only one. Not, not only is he one God, but rather he's the only existing being. Everything else is nothing. In the following chapter, the Rebbe now resumes the discussion explaining how the above concept of God's unity um, finds expression in all the mitzvahs of the text. Now, we, now this is going to help us motivate to do the mitzvahs, because you don't want to deny God, yeah, God's unity. Why would you? All right, questions? Yeah. You were... 
you know, maybe I didn't understand it right, but you were talking about the Yetzer <coughs> and the Sitra Asa, and the Sitra Asa, almost in like the same, as if they're part of the same thing. why when Mashiach comes, Hashem is going to abolish, it's going to abolish the form of impurity forever. And the Yitzhar, there will be no more Yitzhar, or the Yitzhar will convert the Yitzhar to being. Yitzhar has an inclination. I mean, you can train that inclination. Uh -huh. hmm. But, yeah. So but for our purposes... The question is, what, what um, is being a fan of a singer or uh, Michael Jordan, or a... Or oh, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Or Michael Jordan. Jordan. Or whatever, whatever, an athlete or a singer or things like that. Do, are these also forms of idolatry? I guess it... Well, if you go if you, listen, I'm a guy that loves sports. So, know, that's what so, I So, but even if you love sports, you have to admit that sports is a tremendous waste of time. You, you can argue every person needs an outlet, but sports is a tremendous waste of time. Yeah. Now, you can say, oh, but there are many uh, more harmful outlets. So it's be is better sports than, let's say, movies or non-Jewish music. Or whatever. Right. I, think, I, think, I think the word fan is a very broad word. If I'm a fan. I mean, he's Messi is amazing. Ronaldo is amazing. But if you, th if you think about him and you adore him and you want to be like him, then that's... If you, if you, if you don't go to school to go to... <laughs> Exactly. You respect the game. I, I mean, I think, yeah, right, I think if, 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 um, if you're making your life decisions based on what this person yeah, says or does, like, right, that this guy says, yes, oh, you should yeah, exactly. vote for Kamala because uh, Taylor Swift you can, says, you can admire then, you have, then you have a problem. The, mo yeah. at the moment you become a, you lose but your independent you thinking, you, 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 got a, like, you, you got an issue. Like like once I, I once heard an interview with an actor, I forgot which one it is. They asked him like a political question. And he said people don't want political things from me. They want to see me act. Why would I want that that's not and I, and then I saw another guy say, I live in the world of fantasy. I live in the world of pretend. You're asking me a real world question. That's not my my purview. I wish more people more people would like that. Yeah, but yeah, so I mean, if you look, I mean, talking to the, uh, yeah, if you're talking to the Tanya, the sports is a waste of time. But that's why we have pictures of tzaddikim in our houses. We're fans of them. These are people we shouldn't idolize, but we should look up to. Mm -hmm. These are people that led a, a lead, I mean, still still alive, um, lead a, a proper goal. Because a Jew, and this is a, one of the principal ideas of Tanya, a Jew is a means you live a goal oriented life. Goal oriented life means, and the goal isn't just to enjoy yourself and accumulate stuff. It's not the goal. The goal is based on what the terror says, the goals. A person who has a goal oriented life is a much healthier person. But a goal can be also, in today's world, uh, money. Like, but it's not, but, but yeah, but. And that could be. But because, but because human. Be, you know? For sure. But because human beings, we're, ve we're very. We're not, we're not good at, at self judgment. So we need an ob we need an objective um, sort of code of conduct to tell us this is good, this is bad. That's why you have Shabbat. You have, I mean, I don't do there it all the time, but you have a day of rest. And it's, then it's perfect. Yeah, it's a chance to put everything in perspective. That's right. All right, guys. Have a good week. <laughs>